In this clip I will discuss the calculations of summary statistics, summary descriptive statistics for data sets. So let's assume again I, in the lecture I will gloss over the details of this calculation because I assume that you watch this uh, video clip. Let's assume we have seven observations of a variable and we'll just call this x. That could be anything. Uh, it could be age, it could be a uh, number of children, it could be any of the variables for instance in the British Crime Survey but it will leave it unspecified. So let's say we have seven observations. When we calculate summary statistics, we usually use a table. If you have to do it by hand, and I'll show you later how to do it in Excel, if you have to do it by hand, we use a table, a tabular approach. So I've written down all the observations in a column, okay? And we'll, we'll just create a, a table there will be all sorts of headings and we'll use that table for calculation of, of means and standard deviations and variances so we'll come back to it and we give this column a heading x okay and then we have you know ob observations perhaps i can call them i'll just give them numbers one first observation second fourth and so forth all the way to the seventh observation. so let's first calculate uh, talk about the calculation of the mean. Okay, and the mean, we usually call it x bar, and x bar is calculated as 1 over n times the sum of all xi, so now that variable gets a little subscript i, where that i goes from 1 to n. Now the n in our case is going to be 7, okay? So that's how many observations uh, we have. So we can already uh, do some uh, calculation here. It's 1 over 7 and then the sum of all xi. Now what does that mean, the sum of all xi? That means x1 plus, so that's the first one, i equals 1 plus x2, that's the next i, plus x3 and so forth, all the way up to the nth observation. So plus the last element we're going to add is 7. Okay, so we need to add up all these observations. And here are our observations. This guy here, 5, that is the value for x for the first observation. This is also what we call x1. This is what we call x2. And so forth, that last one here is what we call x7. So let's calculate the sum. And usually in our table, we will have here we'll have the sum of whatever column we have here. We'll calculate the sum, that's 10, 23, 30, that's 35. Okay, so we know our x bar is 1 over 7 times 35, and that, of course, is 5. So our sample mean x bar is 5. So this is how we calculate the sample mean, pretty straightforward. All you need to know is you need to know what this what this guy here means and that's the sum of all observations and then you need to divide by the number of observations. The second measure of central tendency where uh, we talked about is the median. So let's talk briefly about the median. The median. So that is the middle value. To do that, it is easiest to line up all the values in increasing order. So we have two values, we have two twice, then the next highest value is five, and that appears twice uh, as well. Then we have six, seven, and eight. So here we have n equals seven, that means we have an odd number of observations. If you have an odd number of observations then the calculation of the median is quite easy. 
what we need as discussed in the lecture and I'll just show you the lecture slide here uh, where we did that is we need the mth value of x okay the, in the order of the ordered version of x so m is n plus 1 divided by 2 so let's uh, do this so m equals n plus 1 divided by 2 so plus in our case that is 7 plus 1 divided by 2 that is 4 that means we need the fourth value so let's go let's check 1 2 3 4 this is our middle value okay so that means the median the median is equal to 5. It's the middle value. And you can see this formula here is just to find out which value is the middle value. When should we have an even number of observations? Then what we need, so let me just replicate. So if um, I used a capital N here and a little n here. It doesn't really matter, it's the same. Okay, the meaning here is the same. So if n was 8, and let me just, let's say we had the same values here, 5, 5, 6, 7, and I'll add an extra 7 here. Okay. So otherwise we have the same values. What we then need is we need the average, what we now don't have a middle value. Okay, we have eight observations. The middle is somewhere here. So what we now need is an average of the two middle values. Okay? And the average of these two guys is gonna be 5.5. .5. So here the median is equal to 5.5. .5. So this is what we uh, what we said in the lecture, we need the average of the value n over half and n over half plus 1. So in our case, if n equals 8, n over half is equal to 4 and n over half plus 1 is equal to 5. So these are the fourth and the fifth value here. And we need the average of that, that's 5.5, .5, and that is then the median. So this is how we calculate uh, the mean and the median. So let's talk about measures of dispersion. And let's first talk about the variance. So this is somehow we want to establish how spread around the mean are our values. And let me first, so we have our values, let's go back to the table. We have our values x and we have our our mean value x bar, okay, that turned out to be 5. So we want to know how spread around our values are. The first natural thing to think about is what's the difference between x, perhaps we should say here, that's xi, between xi and its mean, okay? Because that will give us information about the spread. So let's calculate xi minus x bar. So for the first observation, xi is five and x bar is five as well. So here the spread is zero. Then we have seven, that's our xi for the second observation, minus x bar, that gives us two. Eight minus five, three, five minus five is zero. 2 minus 5 is negative 3, 6 minus 5 is 1, and 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Okay, so this is our spread around uh, the mean. Now, to get a summary, basically what we now want to know is, is this large or small? You may immediately think, oh, perhaps we'll just de calculate the average of these, but let's calculate the sum of all these values, which is what we would need to calculate the average of these deviations. So we have negative 3 plus 1 is 2, negative 3 that's negative 5, plus 3 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. The sum here is 0. It turns out when you calculate this 
this value xi minus x bar, the sum will always be zero. Okay, so this information directly will not give us any information on whether that spread is large or small. It turns out what we need is we need to get rid of the signs. Okay, and there are a number of different ways to do that, but the way how we do it is we calculate the squared value of this. So we calculate xi minus x bar squared. So 0 squared is 0 again, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 0 squared is 0, negative 3 squared is 9, so the sign has disappeared, 1 squared is 1, and negative 3 squared is 9. Okay, and let's calculate the sum of this. Uh, that's 10, 19, uh, 28, 32. So this value here now contains some information. Let's highlight this red. Okay, and let's go down. Okay, so the that red value contains some information. on the spread of data, on the spread. So what was the formula for this? We calculated the sum of all values xi minus x bar squared, okay, for i equaled 1 to n. This is what we calculated. That contains some information. Now to calculate the variance we need to standardize this. This is just the sum. If we want to, if you have samples of different sample size, we want to be able to compare that. So what we do is we need to standardize that by the sample size. So therefore, an obvious calculation to do is to calculate 1 over n times that sum. I equals 1 xi minus x bar squared. So we can calculate this, and this is indeed what we call the variance. Variance, and we we'll give that a symbol, we call that sigma squared. But it is what we call the population variance. So now let me just uh, first, before we continue, we just calculate this for, for this case, okay? So we already know that in our example, that sum here, that was the square we calculated, that was 32. And now we need to divide by 7. So uh, what do we get? 32 divided by 7 equal to 4.5714 4.5714 so standard I would always use four digits decimal points after the decimal points so 4.714 that's the population variance that what does that mean the population bit that means we use this formula if the seven observations are the population. So for instance, you want to calculate the average age in a particular family, and that family has seven members, and you calculate the age, okay? Then you, these observations are the only observations you're interested in then you calculate the variance using this population variance equation. However, if we have this, of course, the situation where the observations we have are a sample only, so we also need to know how to calculate the sample variance. Unfortunately, it is extremely similar to, um, to the calculation of the population variance it is still going to be based on this core calculation here of xi minus x bar squared. Okay, that's the, that's the value which we already calculated in this table here. But now instead of dividing this 
by n we divide it by n minus 1. Okay, so we just subtract 1 from the sample size. And this we call, if we are calculating a sample variance, we replace the sigma, that's a Greek symbol, with an s. We call it s squared. And that is the sample variance. Now in our case, if our seven observations were a sample, were a sample of a bigger population, then what would the sample variance be? We again know that this uh, sum is equal to 32, and then we divide by 6. So what is 6 divide, uh, 32 divided by 6? Uh, it should be 5 and a third. Yep, yeah. here we go. That is equal to 5.133. Ah, sorry. 5.333. So, right, yeah. Okay. So you can see the sample variance is always somewhat larger than the population variance. If we, if the n is extremely large, it's very large, then the difference will become very, very small. Because it won't matter, for instance, if we divide by 1 over 1000, or if we divide by 1000, or by 999, for instance. So this is the variance. We discussed in the lecture that this value is really quite difficult to interpret because it uh, doesn't have a unit or the unit is squared. So if these values were ages, for instance, the unit of the variance would be age squared. And we can't really interpret that. So therefore, we introduced uh, a measure called the standard deviation. And let me... So the standard deviation. And the calculation of this was really easy because the standard deviation was really the same as the square root of the variance. So if we want a population standard deviation, and now let me just uh, abbreviate that, then what we want to calculate is the square root of the population variance population variance with sigma squared, the square root of sigma squared is of course just sigma. So in our case, in our example, the variance, the population variance was 4.5714 and the square root of that, well, uh, we certainly need a calculator uh, for that one. So we have um, 4.5714 and now this calculator has a square root here so the result is 2.1381 okay and the sample standard deviation is just the square root of the sample variance and the sample variance is s squared and therefore we call this little s that was a sigma so we call that little s the calculation in our example is going to be the square root of 5.3333 and that will be 5.333 square root 2 point equals 2.3094 okay and of course the standard sample standard deviation will be somewhat larger than the population standard deviation the interpretation here is that let's go to the population standard deviation that on average the distance or the difference between an observation and the population mean is 2.1381 okay so the average deviation from the mean for observations is 2.1381 
uh, if you look at these values that you know makes sense on average this looks like something between two and three okay so let's just recap here to calculate the variance and the standard deviation either the population or the sample the only core calculation you need is this value okay this value of 32 whatever you want to calculate either variance or either standard deviation you first need to calculate that value and it's best done in a table like this okay and then all you need to know is if you calculate a variance is it sample or population that means you need to divide by n or n minus 1 and if you need a standard deviation you need to take the square root of the respective variance you always first calculate the variance even if you want the standard deviation there's no direct route of doing this calculate the variance first and then take the square root so let me quickly show you how to do these calculations in excel i prepared a spreadsheet here with the uh, observations uh, for x and the first thing i said we'll calculate the sum and what we get is 35 and uh, the mean is of course 35 divided by the number of observations which is 7. You could have also calculated mean directly the, the uh, formula in Excel is average so average then you highlight all the values those brackets enter and you get 5. So now actually as uh, before I should call that xi. So now we want xi minus x bar and the way to calculate that is we need the xi and then minus the mean. So that is zero as uh, it was in in our document before. Let's just actually let us have this table here and we'll look at the table parallel here so five now we want to copy this formula down now this is not going to work why is that not going to work because if i copy it down it will also copy down the reference for the mean and for instance here it will subtract nothing so we need to fix in that formula we need to fix the mean you go to the mean reference that's b14 and you put dollar signs in front of uh, both the column and the row reference. You can do that easily by just pressing F4 when your cursor is in the B14. So now enter. The result for the first doesn't change, but now I copy it down and we get the results which you also have here 0, 2, 3, 0, negative 3, 1, and 3. Now we need the squares. So we want xi minus x bar squared. So we'll just refer to the previous field and we take to the power of 2. So the power is that little triangle, open triangle, and then we copy that across. Let's just check on our formula to see it does the right thing. Exactly, it takes that value and squares it. So, of course, we said we want to calculate the sum. Here we have the sum formula, so we just need to copy that across and we'll calculate this sum, which is 0, and this sum which is 32 as we said before so then we want to calculate for instance the population variance we want to calculate the population standard deviation and we want to calculate the sample variance and the sample standard deviation <laughs> Now, whether you want populations or samples, that depends on the question. There has to be a context to that question that will tell you whether your observations are sample observations or population observations. Here we calculate everything. So we know for the, uh, for the population variance, what we want is the sum of the xi minus x bar squared divided by n. So we take this value divided by 7 4.57 as we had uh, fortunately as we had before then the uh, sample variance will be 32 again but this time divided by 7 minus 1 which is 6 if 
5.333. Then the population standard deviation will be the square root of the population variance. So we calculate the square root um, of that number. And we get 2.13, which is the same as we had before. And the square root, the sample standard deviation is going to be the square root of this. Okay, and that's 2.3094, 2.3094 as before. So let me also introduce, if you go to, uh, to Excel, and perhaps I should. Um, let me actually so view. Can I zoom? I want to zoom a little bit. So it should be easier for you to see. Excel also has built in functions to calculate standard deviations and variances. And let's just see uh, what these guys do. We can go to the function icon here, so we can insert functions and uh, you can find statistical functions. So if you don't know the function name, you can use this little f and then search for the function. Let's look for variance somewhere. I can see here there's a variance p and that will calculate the variance of a population. So we'll click OK and now we need to say which numbers, for which numbers do you want to calculate the variance and it's these guys here. 5 to 11. We we'll click OK, and what we get is 4.57143, exactly what we had here. Um, now, if you want the sample standard deviation, the function is var.s. Let's do that, and what we get is 5.333, as we have here. Now, what about the standard deviation? So, let's go to the function again. Uh, statistical, let's look for standard deviations. And again here you will see a stdef.p and an stdef.s. So let's go population first, standard deviation population, these values, okay, 2.13809, that's fine. And for sample standard deviation we replace the p with an s, we get 2.3094. So it's all uh, easy. The last thing I want to introduce in this uh, little video clip is weighted statistics. So. Weighted statistics. This will mainly be an issue when we have sample data. Okay, and there will be an example, of course, discussed in the lecture. Let me just copy this table from up here. So here's our table. And the issue is that different sample observations different sample observations have different importance. have different importance. So for instance, um, if we uh, if we had if these statistics related, these observations related to obs observation one maybe all homeowners, all observation um, two may be a statistic for uh, those who rent privately. Uh, observation three: those who uh, rent from uh, from a uh, city council have a council flat. Okay. Uh, observation four might be those who are renting a room in a family home, and so forth. Okay. And then you you may have to think of it, are all these observations equally important? But it may be that homeowners are thirty percent in the population. Uh, those who rent privately 
maybe 20% in the population. So then that means that the information coming from homeowners is more important than that from uh, those who rent privately. So we want to give different weights to these observations before we calculate summary statistics which should reflect, it should give us information about the population as a whole. So um, a fully discussed example will be in the lecture. Uh, here we'll just go through the calculations. So what we need for this is we need to know certain weights. Okay, let's call these WI and these weights will differ for each observation. Now I just put some arbitrary weights in here 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0 0.05, 0 0.15, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and 0 0.2. Now the sum of these weights should of course sum to 1 and they do indeed in this case. To calculate the weighted average we first reconsider what we did when we calculated the sample mean. So x bar was 1 over n times the sum of all xi where i was equal to from 1 I went from 1 to n and we said before that was 1 over n times x1 plus x2 all the way up to xn. Now I can rewrite this as I can bring that 1 over n, that factor, into the parenthesis 1 over n times x1 plus 1 over n times x2 and so forth up to 1 over n times x n. So here you can see that every observation in the calculation of the sample mean got exactly the same weight. Okay, They all got a weight of 1 over n, in our example of 1 seventh. If you sum up all the weights which are used here, if you sum up all these values, what you get is a value of 1, Okay, as weights should add up to 1. Now if you want to calculate the weighted sample mean, we basically have to replace these equal weights. Okay, And the way how we do it is in the, fo in the following ma manner. Okay, so we say x bar, and I'll put a little w for weight, weighted average here. And that will be, and we'll compare it with this formula back here, it will be, instead of an equal weight for x1, x1 will get weight w1. So it will be w1 times x1 plus x2 will get the weight for x2, w2 times x2, also fourth, all the way to wn times xn. So these equal weights here are now replaced by these. And again, as all these values, these values all sum up to 1, as we've seen up here. And I can write this in a sort of mathematically, if you're so inclined, more pleasing formula. This is the sum of all wi times xi. Okay, so this formula here looks somewhat different to this one. The difference is in, uh, in the weights. So, if we want to calculate this weighted average, we need a new term in our table. We need wi times xi. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.5. Um, 7 times 0 0.3 is 2.1. 8 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.4. Uh, 5 times 0 0.15 is 0 0.6. 
0.75, 2 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.2, 6 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.6, and 2 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.4. So now we need to add up. So now we have all these all these values here. Now we just need to add them up. So it's uh, 0 0.1, 1.2, 1.95, 2.35, 4.35, 4.45, 4 4.95, 4.95. I don't trust myself fully. Let me just, um, don't want to have a mistake in here. Um, 0.5 plus uh, 2.1 plus 0.4 plus 0.5. 4.95 okay so you can see in this particular case that value is actually quite similar to the unweighted average 4.95 this one we know from above was 5 